If you heard this sound while out on a trail and didn't know of the gray catbird, you might have wondered if there was a feral cat somewhere in the brush. Gray catbirds can be quite secretive and difficult to find. From my own experience in the field, I tend to hear them a whole lot more than I actually see them. They hang out in dense thickets and shrubs such as these, usually near riparian areas. This habitat provides them with the ideal place to nest, protection from predators, and plenty of resources. They're not so keen on flying out in wide open spaces, preferring instead to keep their flight short and low to shrubs. When traversing the dense understory, they use small hops and flutters to get around. They are part of the family Mimidae, which includes mockingbirds and thrashers. Their scientific name is Dumatella carolinensis, with Dumatella meaning small thicket or small thorn bush dweller. They are drab gray with a black cap in rufous color under the tail. These colors help them to blend in seamlessly with the gray color of branches. Sometimes they flick their tails up and down or in a circular pattern when singing or foraging. Males and females look the same, so the best way to tell them apart is by watching their behavior. They are gifted songsters and skilled mimics, often stringing together the songs of birds found in the same habitat, along with their own compositions thrown into the mix. The result is a complex, undulating melody that can go on for minutes at a time. The foundation of their vocal skill is due to their complex syrinx, or voice box. Both sides of this vocal organ can function independently, giving the ability to produce two different voices simultaneously. They can also use both sides of the syrinx together. Males often perch in a conspicuous location to sing, proclaiming their territory, particularly at sunrise and sundown. Their songs are so intricate that you just want to stop and listen and give it your full attention. They also have what is known as the quiet song, which is the same as what you just heard, but quieter. This is usually performed with the beak closed or slightly open. It is used during courtship, when near the nest, and during the fall and winter. There is the mew call you heard earlier, but be on the lookout for variations. Sometimes the mew tone is shorter and raspier. Their diet consists of mostly insects, but also berries, and when they become ripe, they gladly partake. They may be seen at backyard feeders if you offer mealworms or jelly, or if you have shrubs or a garden with some tasty berries. They also forage on the ground, turning over leaf litter in search of insects. Nest parasitism is often attempted by brown-headed cowbirds, but is rarely successful. The gray catbird is one of a small handful of birds that is able to recognize eggs that are not their own and will reject the imposters from the nest. In late summer, they migrate to the coast of southeastern United States, Mexico, the Caribbean, or Central America. They migrate at night. Prior to their departure, they put on quite a bit of extra weight, so much so that it's almost prohibitive to flight. These energetic and spunky birds are a lot of fun to watch, and their songs are just lovely. Do you have the gray catbird in your area? 
or do you have any stories you'd like to share about them? If so, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.